Science Learners, welcome to the new episode of Grade 4 Science Learning Activities. Are you ready to learn new science lesson for today? If you are, I am Teacher Larissa, your learning buddy in exploring Grade 4 Science. In our last science episode, you learned about the uses of water from different sources. 71% of the Earth's surface is composed of water. It can be classified into seawater, freshwater, and groundwater. Seawater is also called as hard water and it contains plenty of salt. It is found in seas and oceans. Freshwater is also called as surface water and it comes mostly from rain. It is found in rivers, lakes, creeks, and ponds. In cold countries, fresh water comes also from snow. Groundwater is the water that seeps in the ground and accumulates in the underground layer of the soil called water table. Groundwater is found beneath the Earth's surface. Water can be used in many ways and it serves as a home to all marine animals. For a quick review, can you identify which of these pictures show proper use of water in our daily activities? Comment down your answers below this video. Now that you know the uses of water from different sources, we can now move forward to our next science lesson which is entitled, The Importance of Water Cycle. Science Learning Episode, The Importance of Water Cycle At the end of this video lesson, you are expected to 1. Identify the different processes of water cycle and 2. Describe the importance of water cycle. The water part of the earth is called the hydrosphere. Ito ay nagmula sa dalawang salitang griego na hydro, which means water, and spira, which means globe or ball. Water covers three-fourths of the earth's surface. Therefore, water covers a larger surface area compared to the land. The earth is also called as the blue planet because the water gives the earth its characteristics of blue color as seen from the outer space. Water moves in the Earth's surface continuously because of the process of water cycle. Sa ating nakaraang aralin ay ating natutunan na ang tubig ay isang renewable resource sapagkat ito ay paulit-ulit nating nagagamit sa tulong ng proseso ng water cycle. Water cycle is also called as hydrological cycle. There are different processes involved in this cycle which include evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation. Let us begin understanding this process by evaporation. Evaporation occurs when the liquid water on the Earth's surface turns into water vapor in our atmosphere. In Tagalog, ang evaporation ay ang proseso kung saan ang tubig ay nagiging singaw. It happens through the help of the heat energy coming from the sun. Heat from the sun causes water to evaporate from seas, streams, lakes, and oceans. Water evaporates into the atmosphere from land and the sea. Kasabay ng prosesong ito ang tinatawag nating transpiration. Plants and animals use and reuse water and release water vapor into the air. When trees and plants release water into the air, transpiration occurs. Animals and humans release water into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor through the process called respiration. Ang tubig ay nakakapag-travel sa ating atmosfera sa anyo ng isang water vapor. Warm water vapor rises up through the Earth's atmosphere. As the water vapor rises up higher and higher, the cold air of the atmosphere causes the water vapor to turn back into its liquid state, forming clouds. This process is called condensation. When a cloud becomes full of liquid water, it falls down from the sky in the form of rain or snow. This process is called precipitation. Rain and snow then fill the lakes and streams and run into the land. Naiipong muli ang tubig sa bahaging ito sa proseso na tinatawag nating collection. 
then the water cycle will start all over again. Importante ang water cycle sapagkat ito ang dahilan kung bakit nagagamit nating muli ang tubig sa ating paligid. It provides people, plants, and animals with water. All life is dependent upon water because it makes up 60 to 70 percent of all living matter and humans cannot survive without drinking water for more than a week. Are you ready to check and see how well did you learn in this episode? Let us try your understanding through answering these short activities. For this activity, identify the processes that happen in the pictures below. Arrange the jumbled letters correctly. Do this on your notebook. For our second activity, study the picture then answer the questions below. Write your answers on your notebook. 1. What do you think is the illustration about? 2. What are the different forms of water in the environment? 3. Do you think each form of water is important? Why? And 4. Do you think balance in nature will be achieved? If water cycle processes are not complete, why? Let us mark your answers. For number 1, the correct answer is, It is about water cycle. 2. The different forms of water are dew, rain, snow, vapor, and hail. 3. Yes, because it keeps the water cycle going. And for number 4, the answer is no. Each process in water cycle is essential in keeping a balanced nature. Did you get all the answers correct in this part? Wow! Excellent! Now, let us mark your answers in our first activity. Number 1 is evaporation. 2 is condensation. 3 is transpiration. And 4 is precipitation. Did you get all the answers correct? Wow! Excellent! For our third activity, below are sentences that describe an example on one stage of the water cycle. In the circle next to each detail, copy the symbol from the correct stage. Do it in your notebook. 1. Rain pours from the sky. 2. Leaves of the plant dried. 3. Fluffy clouds form in the sky. 4. Bathing suit dries after a swim. And 5. Water puddles disappear. For our next activity, choose the letter of the correct answer and write it on your notebook. 1. Why is water cycle important? A. It is a source of money. B. It causes droughts. C. It provides people, animals, and plants with water. D. It is not useful to us. 2. What would happen if the water cycle stopped? A. Stopping it would cause endless drought. B. Stopping it would clean our rivers. C. Stopping it would make the plants grow. D. None of the above. 3. Which of the following human activities affect the water cycle? A. Cleaning up streams and rivers. B. Swimming and fishing. C. Damming rivers for hydroelectricity. D. Planting trees along river banks. 4. How can we protect our water sources? A. Planting trees B. Using chemicals C. Burning fossil fuels and D. Dumping of garbage Number 5. Which of the following statements is false? A. Water cycle is important because it is how water reaches plants, animals, and humans B. 97% of the water in our surroundings is fresh or potable. C. 
Water gives the Earth its characteristic of blue color as seen from outer space. And D. Water can change into three phases. Now, let's mark your answers. These are the correct answers for this activity. For number one, the answer is precipitation. Two, the answer is transpiration. Three, the answer is condensation. Four, the answer is evaporation. And five, evaporation also. Did you get all the answers correct? Wow, you're doing a good job! Now, let us try to mark your answers in this activity. For number one, the correct answer is C. It provides people, animals, and plants with water. For number two, the correct answer is A. If the water cycle stopped, it would cause endless drought. Three, the correct answer is C. Damming rivers for hydroelectricity. Four, the correct answer is A. Planting trees. And for the last number, the correct answer is B. Did you get all the correct answers for this part? Yay! Wow! You're doing a great job! Excellent! Now, let us try to answer this activity. Write the importance of water cycle to men, plants, animals, and environment. Do this on your notebook. Your answers may vary on this activity, but here are some importance of water cycle to men, plants, animals, and environment. To men, it supplies us enough drinking water. Water cycle also helps us use and reuse water. It also provides us with water to use in doing our daily activities. For the plants, water cycle helps in the process of food making. It also keeps the plants alive. It also helps plants to grow. For animals, water cycle keeps them clean. It also provides drinking water to animals. It also sustains marine life. And for our environment, water cycle keeps the nature balance. It keeps the environment going. And it also helps the environment to be a sustainable habitat to plants and animals. That's it, Science Kids! I hope you learned something new in our science episode for today. If you like this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe sa ating channel at i-ring mo na rin ang yung notification bell para manatili kang updated sa ating susunod na videos. You can also follow me on my different social media accounts.